Hey, good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Tuesday. Tuesday is where we update you with the playlist that happens on Rua is the Breath of Life YouTube channel with Frederick. And today um, is when the playlist, The Road to Hollywood or Hollywood Bound. You know, I kind of take some time to update y'all with what's going on in the world of acting for Frederick. As you know, I have an agent in Vancouver. I have not yet been to Vancouver for anything yet. No, no auditions for commercials or shows, but I plan to be. Here's an interesting thing. Liam Neeson <coughs> is coming to film a movie in Cranbrook. I threw my name in the hat for that, even just to do background stuff. Wouldn't that be cool to be on set with Liam Neeson, right? I will find you and I will heal you. Remember that movie, Taken? <laughs> Anyways, um, it'd be nice to get that. I have done an episode since we last talked about the road to Hollywood for Frederick. I did another episode with a local TV program with, what is it, Shaw, Shaw TV? And Basically, my character Joe Medino was having fun after his trial at a party with the rest of the jurors. It was kind of weird because somebody didn't make it to the taping and then they asked me to fill in and do some dance moves. And I just, I wasn't ready, but I, I did it. And But I wasted all my dance moves in the practice, in the rehearsal. And then when they hit action for the camera, I was so tired and sweaty at that point. Golly. But, uh... I'm going to show you some video footage because basically throughout every... I don't know if you noticed, but the battery died there. And I was just saying that throughout the week I record videos and then on the day of that show, whatever the playlist is, so Mondays are A Heart for the Homeless and you would have watched that yesterday and I update you on that, what's going on, show you some video footage. Then on Tuesdays the playlist program for the day is updating you on the road to Hollywood. You know, Frederick is Hollywood bound. I don't know when that will happen, but I, I do everything I can where I'm at, you know, to learn more skills, you know, and then there's other playlists, which you will see when I go hang out at the, at the gym, doing the body transformation and juicing. And, you know, I read stories. I, uh, Sundays I read from this book. But for right now, I'm going to finish the, making my coffee here. And uh, in the meantime, while I finish making coffee, why don't you have a look at uh, the taping of the episode last week. As the sun burns is the name of the program. And my character is Joe Medino. So have a look at my drive-in. And I recorded myself a little bit. And we'll come back and we'll finish out this video, my friends. Hello, my friends. Well, this is Frederick here, and it might not sound like it, but I am extremely tired. I'm really tired. And I have a taping tonight. It, this will be my third episode on the TV show called As the Sun Burns. And there's no sun today. Uh, I worked last night. Lately, I've been working at night making donuts, and I guess I have kind of an update there as well. Um, the thing is, I would have wanted to sleep tonight, but I don't want to miss out on an opportunity to be able to get on this show full-time and be a full-time character. So I don't have many lines. I have one paragraph which is about three lines about me being a middle-aged bachelor and then I have one line that says hey let's do the limbo or something but I'll post a link to the episode when it's on Shaw TV and when it comes to my nighttime job like here's the thing as many of you know who watch my YouTube channel regularly especially the Rua R-U-A-H Rua is the breath of life You'll know that I do a lot of things for the homeless when I'm not working. 
And so on my days off, I'll make food, sandwiches, I'll go downtown and I'll hang out with some homeless people. Even this morning, like I didn't go to bed after work. I went into town and I spent time with one of my homeless friends and, and I helped him out a little bit. Not too sure how much I want to actually share about that whole story yet, but uh, I'll wait till I interview this, this man. Uh, his name is John. I've been talking about him. And, you know, we did what we could with what we had to help this man out this morning and it wasn't easy and uh, he really needed it and at this point in his life we were probably the only people that could come through for him but I'll share more on that in in later videos but the thing is I could not in a good conscience continue to do some parts of my job that I have started because I believe that there are homeless people in our neighborhoods, right in our own backyard, you know, who could use a, a good sandwich or a good meal or uh, whatever, you know, baking. I do a lot of baking, cookies and pastries, and I take that and give them a little treat. And the thing is, without, you know, like just going, Bleh, I throw out so much food at this one place that I was working at, and I can't do that. There's a part of me that does not want to judge anybody and I believe that when you're too busy judging people, you don't have time to love them. And that goes even for different parts of life. But when you're part of an organization that has investors, you're part of, a, let's say, a franchise with industry regulations, you have to abide by a certain guideline. And so I understand that there's just procedures to follow and and yet I don't agree with them because it's about the bottom line it's about money and I'm not gonna stand by and compromise my beliefs and throw out three bags of perfectly good food while there's people going hungry in this world so I had to go and have a heart-to-heart -heart with my supervisor with my employer and just share my heart face to face and say look you know, you hired me to do this job. Now you asked me to do this job. I did not know that this would be a part of my job. And I'm going to be honest with you. I do not feel comfortable doing this. And I will limit myself the amount of hours I work to stay true to my convictions. And so that's what happened. So I'm going to continue to work a limited number of hours doing a particular job at night. And so again, it's back to asking the big guy upstairs to come through because I've got bills to pay. And if I start working for money, it changes this whole life that's been happening. I told you I've had life breathed into me recently from a lot of hardship and sorrow and suffering and brokenness that I experienced myself. And part of that was because like, I didn't have any foundation. Uh, for why I was making decisions. I was always trying to people please. And you know, if somebody thought this is the way I should do it, then I did it. And now I'm starting to make choices for my own convictions, my own beliefs. And I, and I have reasons for why I act the way I act and I choose to do some things and I choose not to do other things. So long story short, I didn't expect to go on this long, but a long story short is my days are limited, my hours are limited, and the job that I was so grateful for um, does not look like it's gonna be long-term and be able to fill in all the gaps. But for what it was, you know, and for what it still is on a limited basis, uh, what a growing experience of being obedient. You can knock on 100 doors, and whatever door opens, and maybe it's number 77, if that's the door that opens, then you gotta trust in something you got to trust in fate or destiny or, or purpose or trust that there is a guiding of your life from outside of yourself. So whether it comes to acting, theater, television, film, employment, career, job choice, you know, you got to trust that things happen for a reason. And so I know that there's going to be another door that opens up. And I look forward to that day when I get to make that video and say, hey, friends, you know what? this prayer was answered or, or this, this came through and this door opened. And when it comes to my acting career, I believe the same thing. Yes, I am willing to go out to the big city of Vancouver and have auditions for major motion pictures, 
television shows. I've just started to um, establish myself on a database online which will allow me to be considered my face um, for pilots, for movies, and I'll go to auditions and I'm gonna give it an honest go. And I believe that there could be a door that opens up here in my town or in the big city, but whatever door opens up, I already know that I'm pursuing a lifestyle of becoming the world's greatest storyteller, an actor. But at the same time, yeah, I make YouTube videos and I'm continuing to grow my skill and my talent. And it's, it's something that I'm passionate about and I'm excited to be an actor. So I'm gonna sign off because I gotta head into town and I gotta think about my lines tonight and what my character would do at a party, how he would dance, who he would dance with, would he even dance at all? And so I'll sign off, uh, I'll catch up with you later. And until then, remember Rua is oh, the breath of love. We have arrived. Can you see the building back there? I've showed you this before. But yeah, we're at the location and this is a Shaw Studios. And the cool thing is, this is a big building. It's like an arena as well. And so, sorry, this thing's spinning all over the place, which is weird, just can't focus. Anyways, it's kind of raining out, but you can see the building behind me. Yeah, it's uh, Shaw Studios and there's a hockey arena and a lot of things in there. But mostly, that's where we will be filming our television show tonight. So that's pretty cool. I'm sure they're all in there and I'll be headed in there shortly. But first I gotta get my stuff together. So you guys might get to have some shots on the inside tonight. We'll see. I'm not sure what to expect, but I don't have my lines memorized yet. So I gotta get that done first. All right, I love you all. Talk okay. to you soon. Well, we are here and we are headed into the studios. As you can see, my character, Joe Medino, has a cane. And, uh, well, there it is, Shaw Studios. So let's head on over. Let's cut across the street here. <coughs> and it's kind of neat because, you know, I only got these lines today and I've had to memorize them. And I don't have them memorized. But with TV and cameras, you can call cut or you can make it up as you go, as long as you get the idea across of what your character is saying. So, here we are at the studios of Shaw TV. I'll show you the sign, then we'll head in for our character. It's kind of weird, nobody knows I use the camera here. So here it is, Shaw Studio. As you can tell, there it is, the sign for Shaw. And let's head on in. There we go. Okay, so that wraps that episode. There's the studio. So I don't know when that episode will be out. They're usually out like a month after we film them. And I'm not even sure. I felt like I was all over the place. Didn't really have my lines down yet and uh, did some improving, but there are some really good characters. It'll be funny, some, uh, some new people were on there today, which is really cool. And uh, as soon as it comes out, like I said, I'll put a link and uh, you guys can watch it. It should be pretty funny. <coughs> Anyways, now it's time to head back and get some sleep. Gotta figure out how to sleep when I can when I'm working graveyards, but uh, Anyways, good to see you. Remember, Ruah is the breath of life. We have things in this world that breathe life into us, and then we have sort of a obligation, a responsibility, a privilege to take that and breathe life into others. So, this is Frederick Nelson Monowich from Ruah is the breath of life, signing off. All right, God love you.
Hey, well, that was uh, the update for the road to Hollywood with Frederick. And so now, you know, I just want to maybe get a little bit serious here. Um, today is Tuesday, March 21st. You know, it is my brother's birthday today, you know. But on top of that, there's something else about today that makes makes it kind of, <coughs> I don't know, heavy. Uh, those of you that don't know, my mama bear, she passed away. Uh, she died of the cancer. And uh, that was two years ago. You know, today is kind of the anniversary of her passing. And, you know, I miss my mama bear. <laughs> But uh, did I show her to you? Here's a picture of my mama bear. That's me and my mom there. and You know, that's my mama bear. So, you know, it's kind of with a heavy heart that, you know, I make this video today. But here's the thing, you know, yes, Tuesday, yes, it's the updates on Frederick's Road to Hollywood. But my mom always knew that I had gifts and I had talents within me that, you know, needed to come out, you know, to help others, you know, make this world a better place, you know. And one of my favorite things growing up was when my mom would come watch me do things. And usually that was with uh, sports, hockey in particular. You know, my mom would show up and, uh, you know, I'd like to impress Mama Bear would be cheering for me in the stands. And there's just nothing better than that feeling, you know. I'm out there on the ice, on the arena, and knowing that I'm making somebody proud. And, uh, oh man. Um, I believe the best way that I can honor my mom now that she's gone to heaven is to live every day to the fullest. Because I know that all my mom wanted was just more time. More time with her family, with her grandkids, with her kids with her husband, you know, and my mom would have give anything. And that's why I tell you that life is not all about money. It's not all about stuff. Because as my mom died, a young woman, you know, 55 years old, wow. You know, she'd have done anything just to have another day, another week, another year. So what kind of person would I be if I were to continue to waste my life, you know, you know, not being excited and passionate about getting out of bed in the morning and doing what I love and loving what I do. You know, I believe the best thing I can do is to pursue my passion of acting, you know, and one day, who knows what could be taking place when I get that first film job, that first TV show, you know, I'm going to be able to know that my mama bear is, you know, proud of me still, you know, I look forward to seeing her again in heaven one day. But while I'm still here living every day with air in my lungs, I want my life to be a testimony to the fact that I've lost people. You know, I have a list up here. You know, in the last two years, I've, I've known personally 27 people who have died, you know, and, and some of those are really, really close. My mama bear, my best friend, you know, uh, there was one of my students, uh, my best friend here in the new town. I'm in my roommate, my housemate, uh, people I went to school with, uh, the, a couple women, you know, one of the women who is responsible for the reason I went to college, you know, she died and, you know, one of my students who I mentored and I counseled. You know, I was there when their dad died. I was beside the bed, you know, and, and only a, like a month and a half later, then their mom died and, you know, and just, oh, golly, you know, I lost people that I had spent really a lot of time with. And I was sad and depressed for a long time. And yet, you know, I think the best thing I could do to honor them, you know, look at that. My uncle died, George, wow. Remember Wendell's mom died also, you know, my best friend's wife died, just tired of going to funerals, tired of going to graveyards, you know, and it started to weigh down on me. 
And now I believe that I can be a part of the redemption of, 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 of their passing. And that's by living each day to the fullest. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed the video of me. I was tired when I went to the, the TV show last week. But, uh, you know, with today, you know, I think about my brother. It's his birthday. You know, my mom was suffering at the end. You know, it was it was good. We told her it was it was okay to go. And, you know, I don't, I don't pretend to understand everything in life. You know, as a matter of fact, I have a lot of questions for the big guy upstairs. But I do trust that everything happens for a reason, you know. And you might not be able to make sense of everything in the moment. But, you know, there is a truth to the cliche that hindsight is twenty twenty. Because when you look back on the past... Sometimes you see how things were working out, you know, um, to bring you to a certain place. And I believe that sometimes the most painful and the most difficult things that you have to go through um, turn out to be pivotal moments in your life that, you know, got you to where you needed to be. You know, and my mom and her struggle you know, became an inspiration for me. And today I live every day for those who I've, I've lost and especially my mom. I still want to make her proud, you know, so I have a responsibility, you know, and also a privilege to know such a wonderful woman got to spend all this, you know, <clears throat> time with me while she was here. So I love you, Mama Bear. I miss you. <laughs> um... And, you know, they say when people pass away, you know, it'll heal over time. It'll get better. But it, does, it doesn't always, you know, heal. You're always going to feel sad for those that you've lost. And, and that's okay. You know, the human soul is, is, a, is a unique thing. You know, the, there's moments where the best thing you can do in life is cry, you know, grieve. You know, there, there is a time to weep, you know, there, there's a time to rest and be sad. Just like there's times to stand up and fight, stand up and be counted. You know, there's a time to love, there's a time for war, there's a time for dancing, and there's a time for celebrating. And, you know, all I know is that I trust that there is a bigger plan. And when I don't have the answers, I can trust one who does. And that sort of lets the pressure off of me to try and figure out life. So I want to sign off this video saying, Mama Bear, I love you and I miss you. And also happy birthday to my brother. And the road to Hollywood, you know, uh, is about me pursuing my passions and dreams because my mom always told me to, you know, go after your dreams, you know. Why, why would you want to spend your life doing something that is so difficult for you to get out of bed in the morning. Be excited about life. If, it, if, it, if it's your job, then I hope you love your job. If it's your kids, I, then I hope you love being a parent. You know, if you're an artist, then I hope you love singing, drawing, building cabinets. If you're a truck driver, I hope you love driving. You know, whatever it is that you're doing in life, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Because if you don't love it, then I... I tell you, go go take a job baking donuts for ten dollars an hour if you love donuts. You know, find something that excites you, that fires you up. Because I think the best thing you can do to breathe life into the world is to become the best version of yourself. Who who are you? What do you look like when you're at your best? You know, what 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 happens when you're in your element? You come alive. And I believe that, you know. The, the, the depth of glory you can bring to your creator is to be a human being fully alive. Are you burning for the things that are put inside of you? Because I don't want to be the guy who's lying on my deathbed when I'm 87 years old and having all the ghosts of the shouldas and the couldas and the wouldas. You know, I'd rather deal with that now. And to know that I at least made the effort, you know? So 
I'm, I'm going to sign off and I'm going to just finish it with a quote, but I have to go get this quote. It's in my book and, uh, and we'll wrap up today's video, my friends. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. Whoops. I almost sat on my coffee over here. We'll put my coffee over there and so I got my book and I'm just going to read you, you know, a quote to finish off this video. You know, um, my mom was a hockey player and, you know, she knows what it's like to leave it all on the ice, to be in the arena and uh, to give it your all. So no matter what arena you are in life, my friends, like I said, um, whatever you do for a job, if you're a parent, you know, if, if you're an artist, if you're an athlete, if you are a counselor, a mentor, uh, whatever it is, give it everything you got, my friends, okay? All right, I want to read this for you. Now, this is from uh, Theodore Roosevelt, I think. And it's a book called Hand Me Another Brick. And it goes like this. It's not the critic who counts, not the one who points out how the strong man stumbled or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming who does actually try to do the deed, who knows the great enthusiasm and the great devotion and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. Far better is it to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy nor suffer much because they live in the gray twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. Spend your life in a worthy cause. Be a man or a woman whose face is marred by dust and blood because you fought the good fight in the arena. Whatever excites you in life, go after it. Remember that movie, Pursuit of Happiness? Will Smith says to his boy, don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do something. You got a dream? Go get it. Mm -hmm.